So today we're going to start section eight. Today it will be the 1.8a notes. Today we're going to talk about quadratic inequalities. So again, there's three steps that we're going to follow when we solve quadratic inequalities. First thing we want to do is get your inequality to have a zero on either the left or the right side. Then we're going to solve it as if it's equal to zero. And then what we need to do differently is we're going to set up test points on our graph. So let's go ahead and see what I mean by this. So again, we're going to be factoring today. Now, Technically, on all these quadratic equations or quadratic inequalities, you could also use any of the four techniques that we learned. You could do completing the square, quadratic formula, um, square root method, or factoring. Generally, factoring is the fastest way, but technically I could do completing the square to get my two test points. But for the majority of these, not until the end, I'm going to factor all of these because it's the fastest way. So again, what you're going to do first is we've got to make sure that we have a zero on either the left or the right side, which we do. And now what we're going to do is solve this as if it were an equal sign. So we're going to first pretend that it's really x squared minus 2x minus 3 equals zero. So I have to factor, find the factors of negative 3 that give me negative 2, and that's going to be negative 3 and positive 1. I set each of my factors equal to 0 and solve for x. So I get x equals 3 and x equals negative 1. So I'm subtracting the 1 and adding the 3. Now, these are going to be how I'm gonna break up my number line. So let me come over here to the side. I'm gonna draw my number line. And I'm gonna put my test, my, my breaking points here. I have to put them on the number line least to greatest. Actually, maybe move this over a little bit. So I got a negative one and a positive three. Now, what this is doing is my answer here was an inequality. So I'm looking for values that are less than zero. But the easiest way to do this is to pick a test point. I like to plug in zero. So I have to see where zero is located on my number line. And I know that zero is located right here. It's in between negative one and three. I don't need to care. I don't care where precisely it is. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in zero to my original problem to see if I get a true statement. So I'm going to take my original statement, which was x squared minus 2x minus 3 less than zero. So zero squared minus 2 times zero minus 3 less than zero. Zero squared is zero. Negative 2 times zero is zero minus 3. And then I get the statement negative three is less than zero. Is this true or false? This is true. Three is, negative three is less than zero. So because this is a true statement, then right here where the zero is located, I'm gonna put a check mark. And it's not really showing up, so I'll do a black one. And then the two sides on either side, the numbers that are less than negative one, and greater than three are not gonna work for this inequality. Now, what you're gonna do is once you find one of the sections, so I have a section here, that's everything that's less than the negative one, then I've got the section here in the middle that works, and then I have everything over here that doesn't work as well. The pattern is always gonna be the same for the quadratics. It's gonna be a check, an X, a check, the pattern will alternate. You could even start with X first. It'll always alternate. So whatever section you test, then you either put an X or a check there if it works or not, and then the other ones on either side are the opposite marking. So for here, my answer is only in the middle, so it's gonna be the segment if I had to graph this. 
So in last night's homework, what we would have done is we would have put, and this has got uh, just a simple less than, so it would have been a parenthesis, parenthesis, and joined in the middle. So when the check mark is in the middle of your breaking points, it's the segment. When the check marks are gonna be on the two outside parts, it's gonna be pointing outward, and it's gonna be um, the two rays pointing outward. So now, to write this in interval notation, my answer here is gonna be just the segment, so from negative one to positive three. It has parentheses around it because it was that segment in the middle there. And again, you're gonna put at least the greatest. Let's try the next one. So for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and do it as if it's equal to zero. So x squared minus x minus six equals zero. Factors in negative six that give me negative one. Again, when I'm trying to get a one or a negative one, that's a clue that my factors are side by side. So it'll be a negative three and a positive two. Set each equal to zero. Solve for x. This becomes my separation points or my breaking points. These are also my intercepts. Okay, so now this is where I'm gonna divide up my number line. So I'll come and do it over here. So here's my number line, least to greatest. So put the negative two, the positive three, I'm gonna to look to see, I like to plug in zero. You can plug whatever number you want into this original for X. You could pick 10 or you can pick numbers that are on the outside edges. Zero is the easiest one to plug in. So when I plug in a zero here, I get zero squared minus zero minus six less than zero. So this ends up being negative six less than zero, which again is a true statement. So the area, the section where zero is located, which is right here, since this was true, I put a check mark here in the middle again. And then the two sections on either side of it, because remember it's a pattern, X check, X check, X check. I can see again, it's just the segment. So when you would graph, if you were to graph this, you would be putting parentheses, parentheses and join it in the middle. So in interval notation, negative two comma three with surrounded by parentheses. Let's try the next one. The next one, the check marks are gonna be on the outside. So let's try that one. So again, solve it as if it's equal to zero. Factors in negative 20 that give me negative one, gonna be negative five, positive four. Set each of the factors equal to zero. Add five, x equals five. Subtract four, x equals negative four. So now again, let's set up the number line and put in the breaking points. So least to greatest, negative four, and then the positive five. So again, I'm gonna locate where zero is. Zero is right here in the middle. So again, I'm gonna plug in zero to the original equation. So I'm gonna get zero squared minus zero minus 20 greater than or equal to zero. This gives me negative 20 greater than or equal to zero. This is false. So the area where the zero is located gets an X, and then the two on either side, the pattern repeats. This is where the values will work. Now, if you wanted to see where it works, pick a number that's bigger than five and plug it in, or pick a number that's less than negative four. So for example, if I would have plugged in, say 10 and square it, I would get 10 squared, minus 10 minus 20 greater than or equal to zero, 
100 minus 10 minus 20 is going to give me 70. 70 is definitely greater than zero. So the area where 10 was located and 10 is located over here obviously gets the check mark. So again, you don't have to plug in zero, but again, you want to be able to do this as fast as possible. So plugging in a zero is usually the easiest way to do it. So now the interval notation for this one. So if I were to graph this one, this one had the or equal to. So on this one, it would have been the bracket pointing this way, bracket pointing this way, and then an interval notation. Yes. So for here, I got to write the interval notation. Now remember, this has negative infinity over here, positive infinity over here. So again, as you read it left to right, parentheses with negative infinity, it gets to the negative four with a bracket. The gap where that red X is, that's going to be the U. And then it starts up again at five, going to infinity. Remember, the negative infinity and the positive infinity always get parentheses. So when the two check marks are on the ends, we're always going to be joining the two segments or the two rays with a union symbol. Let's try the next one. It's got a, an A term, so it's got a number in front of x squared. So this one's a little bit more challenging for factoring, but it's still doable. So for this one, when I factor it, again, treat it as if it's an equal sign. My numbers are small. I can guess and test here. Factors of four and factors of negative six, they're actually going to be, I'm going to use four and one. And then for six, I'm going to use three and two. If you're going to guess and test like this, foil it. Make sure it is going back to the middle. Um, really, all you need to do is the outer and the inner. So once I do outside, I would get negative 8x. Inside would give me positive 3x. And that did give me the negative 5 in the middle. So I did pick the right factors with the right sign. So I am good. So now let me just come down here to the bottom. Set each factor now equal to 0. Going to solve it. 4x equals negative 3 divide by 4, x equals negative 3 fourths, add, and x equals positive 2. So again, this is going to be where I'm separating my number line. Put negative 3 fourths here, positive 2 here. Now, when your answers are a negative and a positive, you know zeros right smack in the middle. Um, like Alejandro just said, what if they're both negative? Then put zero on the far right and then just check that section. Um, again, remember the pattern will repeat. So when I plug in a zero into my original problem, it was four times x squared, so zero squared, minus five times zero, minus six, greater than zero. So once I do all this, these are both gone. And then I get negative 6 greater than 0. This is false. So the section where the 0 is gets an x. And then these guys on either side get the check marks. So again, I've got to write it with the union. So again, remember this is negative infinity pointing that direction and positive there. So it goes from negative infinity up to the negative 3 fourths. The original symbol was just a greater than, so it's a parentheses union where that x is then it starts up again at two and it goes to infinity so graphed would have been parenthesis pointing that way parenthesis pointing that way again if you looked at that quadratic and you thought oh i don't like the factor when there's a number in front of x squared you could do quadratic formula or completing the square to get the negative 3 fourths and the positive 2. It works. But again, once you start getting the hang of factoring, it's the fastest way to solve these things. Again, we're not going to end factoring. We're going to be doing it all year long. So um, it's 
good practice. Be able to get this down and get it fast. All right, let's try the next one. Remember, we needed to make sure that we had a zero on either the left or the right side. All of the previous examples already had the zero there. I need to get the 12 to the other side. I also have to distribute this x. So you can either choose to move the 12 first or distribute, or if you want to do them both at the same time, this will distribute into x squared plus x, and then I'm also minusing the 12. So now I've got a quadratic. Again, I can treat it as if it's an equal sign. Again, I'm trying to get a one in the middle. So this again is a clue, my factors are side by side. It's gonna be x plus four and x minus three. Go ahead and set each one equal to zero. And I get x equals negative four and x equals positive three. These are gonna be my breaking points on my number line. Again, remember, least to greatest, so put the negative four first, and then the positive three. Again, I like zero. You don't have to use zero, but again, it's usually the easiest. So zero is located right there. So if I do zero times zero plus one, less than 12, zero times anything is zero, zero is less than 12. This is a true statement. So right here in the middle gets the check and then the two sides are gonna get the X because again, the pattern repeats. So now again, it's just a segment and again, it was just a less than. So if I had to graph this, parenthesis, parenthesis, joined in the middle. So in interval notation, this answer is negative four comma three, surrounded by parentheses. So I need to move the 16 over. X squared minus 16, greater than or equal to zero. Again, treat it as if it's equal to zero. This factors into X minus four, x plus four, and then set each factor equal to zero. Add four, and this one gives me x equals four, and then here minus four, do it in yellow so it shows, and then this one gives me x equals negative four. So again, this is gonna be where I separate my number line one at negative four, positive four. I'm gonna pick zero in between. And again, plug it into the original. So I get zero squared greater than or equal to 16. This is a false statement. Zero is not greater than 16 or equal to it. So I would put the red X here in the middle and the two check marks are on the edges. So again, graphing, because it's got the or equal to, it would be a bracket pointing out that way, bracket that way, and then in interval notation, you would write this as from negative infinity to the negative four with a bracket unioned with starting up again at four, to infinity. And again, infinities always get the parentheses. Now the next one we actually can't factor, so I'm actually going to do quadratic formula. All right, number seven. Again, I need to get that negative one to the other side, so I can add the one. And now I have x squared plus four x plus one greater than zero. If I treat this, this as an equal sign, there are no factors of one that will give me four. So now I have to use the quadratic formula. So my a is one, my b is four, my c is one. Now if you prefer completing the square, 
that's gonna work as well. So let's plug it in. So opposite of B plus or minus B squared minus four times A times C. All under the radical, two times A. Negative four plus or minus 16 minus four Negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 12 over 2. Remember, do not simplify until after you break down the radical. So I need to break down the square root of 12. It actually breaks down into 2 square root 3. Now I can simplify. And I can divide this by a 2, a 2, and a 2. So then this ends up being final answer, negative two plus or minus the square root of three. Now you're like, oh my goodness, how am I gonna figure out where zero is located? We're gonna have to approximate the square root of three without a calculator. So let's put it on the number line. So I actually have negative two minus root three and negative two plus root three. I pull it apart. Now, let's think about where the square root of three is located in between what two perfect squares. So if you think that you've got the square root of one and then the square root of four, which is, this is one, this is two, obviously the square root of three, which is in between these, and it's closer to the four, it's gonna be greater than 1.5. Let's say it's about 1.7. So really what we're doing here is negative two minus 1.7 and negative two plus 1.7. So obviously both of these are gonna be negative answers. This is gonna be about negative 3.7 and this will be about negative 0.3. So if you plug in zero, zero is located over here on this far right section. So we can plug in zero, but the answer we get will determine the X or the check above that far right breaking point. So let's plug it in, let's plug in zero. Zero squared plus four times zero, greater than or equal, or just greater than negative one. This gives me zero greater than negative one. This one is a true statement so over here where the zero is located is a check and then work backwards with the pattern. Check X, check X, just repeat the pattern. So now this is the one where it's unioned. So it's gonna be from negative infinity to negative two minus negative or minus root three. And it was just a greater than, so it's a parentheses. Where the x is, that's the union. Then it starts up again at negative 2 plus root 3 to infinity. So again, graphed, it would have been parentheses pointing that way, parentheses pointing that way. For the last one, once we move that 48 over, we're gonna factor by grouping. Now, this pattern of the X check, X check, always works for quadratics. It doesn't always work for polynomials when the exponent is bigger, but if it's an odd exponent like this one, the pattern still works. So let's go ahead and try it. I'm gonna move the 48 over. two x to the third minus three x squared minus 32 x plus 48 greater than zero. Four terms, so this tells me factor by grouping. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a green group here. And let's see if the red shows up. And a red group. All right, so for my green group, I'm gonna factor out a GCF. My GCF is X squared. I'm left with two X minus three. My GCF of red 
is going to be negative 16. And I'm still left with the same thing, the 2x minus 3. Again, remember, we're solving this as if it were an equal sign. So again, we're going to take the two GCFs we found, this x squared, and put it with the negative 16. And then take the two things that were in common, that goes in the other parentheses. I can keep going on the x squared minus 16. I can factor that into x plus 4, x minus 4. I now set each one equal to 0. Notice it was an x to the third power, so this tells me I've got three answers I'm looking for. So minus 4, x equals negative 4, add the 4, x equals positive 4, add the 3, divide by 2, and x equals 3 over 2. Now, this time I got four sections. Let's go ahead and take a look at this one. Again, put it on here least to greatest. So negative 4, then the negative, or then the 3 over 2, which is 1 and a half, and then the positive 4. Again, pick your test point. You don't have to use zero. You can pick whatever number, but again, zero is the easiest. So zero is located right here. And I'm going to take my original equation, the 2x to the third. So zero to the third, 3 times zero squared, negative 32 times zero, greater than negative 48. So this is gone, this is gone, this is gone. I end up with zero greater than negative 48, this is true. So right here above the zero gets a check. Then the pattern repeats. X is here, and then another check over here. So it always repeats. X, check, X, check. So now I need to write this in interval notation. So because my original symbol was a greater than, if I graph this, parenthesis, parenthesis, connect it, parentheses pointing this way. So I'm starting at negative 4, comma, 3 over 2. The gap there with the x is the u. Starts up again at 4, and it goes to infinity. So every place that there's a check mark, that is what's going to go in your interval notation. So that is it for the quadratic inequality. Now the last one was to the third power. It wasn't quadratic, but because it was an odd power, we could still use the pattern of x check, x check. And that is it for 1.8a. Homeworks on WebAssign. Test is next Tuesday.